Would you like to be able to deal with the COVID stress more effectively? If yes, stay tuned! Hi, this is Sebastian Antonovich and on my 5-Minute Psychology channel I talk about mental health, self-development and education. If you haven't done it yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. This way you will get much more interesting and useful psychological information. Recently I've noticed a growing number of people concerned with the coronavirus pandemic. I've noticed that these people have two major fears. Fear number one is connected with getting sick yourself or maybe being afraid that someone you love can get infected. Fear number two is related to financial difficulties you can get into if you lose your job or even if you are not given the long promised pay rise. Also, due to the fact of isolation, a lot of people feel really depressed that they can't contact with the people they like. They feel lonely. And there is also a group of people who feel bored and tired with this isolation because they can't do any sports outside, they can't go to the cinema or to a restaurant and they get bored. If someone is bored, what do they do? They watch the news. And that brings me to my first hint for you. If you want to deal with the COVID-19 stress more effectively, you must limit your access to information. Yes, I know it's necessary to be informed on the recent developments. But there is a difference between being informed and being overwhelmed with a mass of information. So if you listen to 11 different virology specialists, is it going to increase your chance of avoiding the COVID-19 infection? Or will it give you the overwhelming feeling of being immersed in this pandemic? And the feeling that we are all doomed and this pandemic will never end? Side note here, it will end. History teaches us a very important lesson. All pandemics that the humanity has been through, they ended at some point and this one will end as well. But you must be strong enough and resistant to stress enough so that you can survive until that moment. Number two, if you want to survive this COVID-19 pandemic in a better mental health, concentrate on others rather than on yourself. This will take the pressure off of yourself, but also it will help a lot of people. It can make their lives much easier. When you help others, it gives you this feeling of achievement. Think what you can do depending on your profession. If you're a teacher in times when kids don't go to schools and parents are overwhelmed with this education, what can you do for these people? If you're a chef, who can you help with your services? Maybe people working 10, 12, 24 hours sometimes to help us survive this pandemic. If you're a mental health specialist, what can you do for people in distress free of charge? Helping others gives your life a purpose. It's gratifying and it's doing good. Another thing that has been brought to my attention is that a lot of people feel that they are all alone in the world with this COVID situation. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. You are anything but alone with this situation. This is something that affects absolutely every human being in the whole world. And this should give you this feeling of being united with everyone else. We all go through the same difficulties, through the same hardship and through the same stress. And we must learn how to deal with it. Because even if we survive the whole pandemic, from the medical perspective, our mental health can decrease. Yes, we take part in something really terrible and difficult, but on the other hand, this is something that will be in history textbooks for hundreds and hundreds of years after us. Many people informed me that they feel overwhelmed with the difficulties of every day's life. And I can understand that really, because going through everything connected with this pandemic is really, really difficult to all of us. But if you feel that all the big things are too difficult for you to handle just right now, concentrate on the little things. If you can't solve a difficult problem at work, concentrate on such small activities like cleaning your apartment, preparing dinner for your family, or even checking your mailbox. I know it sounds like something really irrelevant, but it's actually the opposite. If you are overwhelmed with how big the problems are, start with little steps and you will quickly see how much you have already achieved. If you are still feeling lonely, what can you do? You can socialize. Of course, very often you can't go outside. You can't go to a restaurant with your friends. Sometimes you can't even invite them for a tea. But you have telephones, you have video conferencing. Do whatever you can to get in contact with people you like. If you are working from home constantly due to the pandemics, use it to your benefit. 
Think how much time you've gained on non-commuting. Use this time to socialize with your colleagues, with your friends, with your family members. Now, don't get me wrong. Do not use your working time to do that. No, use only this time that you've saved on commuting. And you will see that you are a part of a larger group, that there are people who care for you. And it will introduce some more diversity to monotonous days. Which brings me to the next point related to working from home. Now, many people have already tried that many times and right now, most of them are really efficient at it. But if you have recently been forced to work from home only, that could be a struggle because it's really difficult to put the boundaries right. My suggestion is to keep every day structured. Even though no one of your colleagues is going to see you, still wake up at the regular time, take a shower, brush your teeth, put your makeup on and get dressed. I know it sounds comfortable to work in your pajamas, but believe me, it's going to do you nothing good because it actually makes the boundary between your private life and the professional life distorted. Okay, so working from home is not so difficult. How about if you've lost your job? And I've heard from many of my clients that this is something they are afraid of, but also they know a lot of people who are struggling with difficulties of being unemployed. The same rule applies. Keep your life structured. Also, remember that you have to get out of bed rather than binge watch your favorite TV series the whole day. And to make sure you get back on the horse quickly, make sure to restructure your career. Search for the new job opportunities that appeared during the pandemics. Ask your friends and relatives if they know someone who needs an employee. Use this time to educate yourself, either in a formal course, like a university online course, or watching videos on YouTube, which could be very educational. And regardless, if you are working from home or if you are unemployed, remember to go outside whenever it's possible. I know that in certain regions it may not be possible at all, but if you have a balcony if you have a porch, do it, use it, go outside, breathe the fresh air, expose yourself to sunshine. It's very important from the medical perspective because it loads you with the D3 vitamin, but it's also very important from the mental health perspective. Spending time with the nature is very important for us. It lowers the level of stress and it makes us feel more comfortable. And the final hint I can share with all of you is to let go of things which are beyond your control. And you may have seen it in my other videos in which I talked about ways of preventing stress before it happens and ways of lowering your stress once you are under the influence of it. Letting go of things which are beyond your control is a very important step because if you can't change it right now, leave it for later. Don't be bothered with it. Concentrate on the things that you can change. Even if they are little things, very small steps, do it rather than being worried about things that you have no influence on. On my channel, you will find a whole playlist of videos in which you can find many different ways of lowering the stress. For example, some techniques that you can use to avoid stress before it comes to you. In another video, you will find techniques of lowering stress once you're already under its influence. Let me know in the comments what difficulties related to COVID-19 you are struggling with, and let's see if we can help you.